closures. Let's talk about JavaScript closures and how to use them to um, get you some private data members, just like Java has. But JavaScript, you know, doesn't have a private keyword. Uh, there's no private. Uh, but we can get some privacy with using closures. So let's uh, first let's see what closures are. So I'm going to write a function called repeat n times stick n, and then the string that you want to repeat n times. And then here it's going to say for bar i equals zero i less than n i plus plus. And uh, I forgot the result. Our result is the empty string. Result gets appended with the string, and we return the result. There you go. We reload the page, and repeat n times is there. So if repeat five times, the string hi is going to say hi, 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 hi. Uh, there we go. So that appears to be working. Um, but that's not what we wanted. Okay, now uh, let's say what we wanted really was to be able a func to hardwire this n here. We want that guy hardwired, and we want to repeat five. So we want a function that repeats five times. Another one that says ten or fifteen. We want all these functions that repeat x times. But we want them hardwired for that particular x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this function to. Uh, to be a function constructor. So this function is going to return a new function, which I'm writing here, repeat it. This function is going to take the actual string, and uh, then it's going to, we're uh, indenting this. Da, 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 da. Um, so that's the function we're going to return, repeat it. Return, repeat it. Right. So now, repeat n times, what it actually does, it returns a function, right? Repeat it. And a function is defined here. And the thing to notice that you need to notice is, you know, this function is going to take an str, right? That's there. And then this function has this result variable that's in there. That's all local. And the i variable is all local. But there's this n. See this n here? This n is actually an argument to this function. So when I return repeat it, what's n going to be? So let's look at that. So if I call repeat n times 5, I'm going to get a function. So that returns this function by which that n. So the function, we'll call it r5. Uh, r5 gets that. So r5 is my function. And if I call R5 with high, I'm going to get high, high, high five times. If I call R5 with hello, it's going to repeat it five times. So you see, R5 was the repeat n times you know, five. It was function. So I can do it with eight. I can say R8. So R is another function. You see, it's the same function. Uh, but what happens is R8 is this function plus this invisible closure. And uh, the closure, what it hold, a closure holds local variables and their values. And in this case, there was only one local variable, n, which was set to 8. Right? We go back here, you see n. When we enter this function, a local variable is created, n. Right? So this is the same, because n is an argument, it's the same as saying var n here. Um, and uh, you need to do that. So, so when this function is defined here, that n, because n is a variable within this function, uh, and is a local variable that is not declared within that function, it gets put into a closure along with the function itself, and the value gets fixed at you know whatever number it was at the time when it, when the function was defined. So that's the cool thing about this. So you can do, you know, and uh, so I can declare R8, and then it's going to repeat that eight times, and I can declare R6, uh, similar. So I can create all these functions, each one slightly different. Uh, it's the same function, but some of the variables are different. The value, variable values are different. Right. 
So that's a closure. It's a function plus the local argument, uh, pl plus these local variables that are bound. Now, the cool thing about this, so this is useful when you're building your web apps because it is, it is when you're doing a GUI, it is often true that you need this sort of the same function for a lot of functionality. Like say you have a bunch of buttons, each one with a different color, and uh, you want them all basically to do the same thing but with a different color. So you might have, might then create a function like this that creates functions and that do the same thing but for a different color. Usually you would do that if getting the color was a computationally expensive operation. So you didn't want to get it every time the user clicked on it. You want to cache it basically. So that's one way of sort of doing some work because that variable is said, the end var variable is said early on. If calculated in the end was expensive, now you just saved it and you're just calling this repeated with a fixed end. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the other thing to note is that even though these are in a closure, right, if you have multiple functions within here, two or three functions, those functions can share the variable. All right, so let's see. I'm going to write this function we call make property. We can use that to simulate a private property name. So make property takes the, the name of the property. And uh, let's just say that's it. Just keep it simple. Oh, and the object that you want to add a name to. So we're going to say, uh, you know, in JavaScript, you can have an object O, right? And then I can say, oh, that name is Bob. Right, so name is a property, but anybody can uh, can then of course change the name, right? So there's no way to say name is private, and you have to uh, change it. You know, uh, using like in Java, you would say O dot set name. Uh, so let's say you wanted to force people to use set name and get name to change the name. There's no way to do that, you know, built in to JavaScript, but we can we can make that happen. Let's do that. Uh, so we're gonna create a function called make property, which is gonna add a property of name, whatever name that is, and uh, to the object object. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say oh uh, set name. So uh, the set property is going to be this. So it's going to be, uh, uh, I'm setting, I'm using an anonymous function here because I'm just setting it right away. And the function is just going to, uh, I need a local variable, property. Uh, property is x. So that's the set method and I'm going to need a get method. Get name is function x and return property. So that's my make property function, right? So let's see what that does. Uh, see if it works, first of all. <laughs> so let's see, I have a make property function there. So I think I have an object O, which has got nothing in it. I'm gonna call make property on O, and I want uh, the name. Um, capital N name. So when I look at O now, let's see what he's got. He's got two methods get name and set name. Right? So O dot get name is going to return undefined because I haven't set it. Let's try set O set name to Bob uh, and uh, get name. Get name is Bob. And uh, I can set his name to Alice and get him. And now he's Alice. But if you look at O, right, he doesn't have a name property, right? So the way this is working is look back in the code is when we define both, we have two functions here, both of them use the property, which is a local variable. So both of these functions have a closure associated with them. That closure has the property variable. And uh, but they they both have the same property, right? Because both functions were defined within the same scope, 
right, of, of the make property function. So they share the property variable, and that is how this works. So when I call the set and the get method, they're both actually using the same property. Like this wouldn't work if, you know, if I move this out to some other function and uh, put it down here in some other function, if I had, you know, make set property and make get property, that would not work. They have to be within the same function in the same scope. So that's pretty cool. So you can use closures to, you know, get and, you know, basically create this uh, private value so there's now the only way to change the name is to call set name and of course that means just like in java that this function set name it could have other things it could you know the reason you do set name stuff is if you want to make sure that you know if x is whatever whatever then don't do anything or throw an error so if you want to make sure that say the name is always capitalized or something like that so those are closures and a couple of reasons why they're good